you might have heard, well, there's a little football game next weekend. Now, I know that some people couldn't care less about the Super Bowl, while others are quite passionate about it all. Now, if you are a fan, you know that last weekend's games determined the final two teams to be in. Now, I don't know who you were rooting for, but dang, both of the teams I wanted lost. I wanted the Chiefs, of course, and the 49ers. Now, it's not that I am all that big of a fan of the 49ers. It's just that when it comes to the Rams, well, I am so not a fan of the owner. <laughs> Enough, said. Enough said. Anyway, since this is the weekend without football, let me try to fill that void with something for fans and non-fans alike. Let's talk about coaches, their role, and how that applies to our own lives. Now, if you play any team sport and you have a good coach, a, a coach in whom you can rightly put your trust, in addition to skill building and conditioning, your coach will do these three things. One, first, a good coach will set expectations you know, about drinking, showing up for practice, training regimens, other behaviors. If you want to be on this team, this is what you do. Secondly, your coach will make sure that you know these two things are true at the same time. A, how you play your position is crucial. And B, you are not the whole team. Again, A, how you play your position is crucial. B, you are not the whole team. And thirdly, in the middle of the game, a good coach expects immediate compliance. It's true that the coach will not be able to run your route or make your play for you. You still have to do it. But unless you listen to the wisdom of the coaches, you won't do it in a way that is best for the whole team. Now, of course, there will still be times when you, you've got to think on your feet, right? Perhaps it's a broken play or you see something you've never seen before. But unless you truly know the coach's system, you really won't know how to rightly deviate from it when necessary. In sports and in life, it's important to let myself be coached. To be humble enough to know that I don't know it all. That there is often someone who sees more than I see. Today's gospel, Jesus offers Peter some coaching. Now, Peter had been fishing all night with no success when Jesus tells him, put out your nets, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Now, I imagine Peter thinking, dude, I'm the fisherman here. He's a carpenter. Every fish in its right little fish head is now deep in the heat of the day where it's cooler, lower than where my nets could catch them. And if I go out now, the guys will never let me live it down. They'll just be laughing at me. But Peter had listened to Jesus when he spoke to the crowds. And something stirred in him. This man was not like any other. There, there was something truly profound in him. Something worth surrendering to. And Peter says those important words. Jesus, at your command, I will. And he puts himself under the authority of someone who sees more deeply than he sees. My friends, if I am going to be a follower of Jesus, I too must let myself be discipled, let myself be coached. Obedience 
is a bond of trust whose focus is the larger good. And we have in Jesus Christ the best coach, someone truly worth our trust, worth even our lives. Now, we've all known bad leaders and bad coaches, people who lord it over us, abuse power as if it's something they own, act as if they know everything, take advantage of people, hurt them. We rightly reject that. But that does not dismiss the need for authentic obedience. And it's also true that not everyone is easy to coach. The biggest challenge is usually pride. There are players who have the skills, but they're with their sometimes notorious egos won't be as effective as they could be. By not letting themselves be coached, they often cause dissension on the team and cause others to be less effective. Well, my friends, we all have fairly good-sized egos sometimes and don't particularly want to let ourselves be coached either. In this culture especially, we tend to resist the notion of obedience, that any personal accommodation to authority is a move against my own integrity, that to obey is to give up too much of myself. But it is not oppressive to be coached. It is liberating. If we individually and collectively are going to succeed, we have to let ourselves be coached, to put ourselves under the authority of another. Sometimes that might mean we need to let what our child is trying to say to us affect us. Or we need to let ourselves be coached by the wisdom of our spouse or our parent or friend, and no one more so than Jesus Christ himself. There is no one more trustworthy, no one who is more worth listening to, surrendering to. He not only has the words of life, but he lived them himself. And I might be tempted to dismiss the idea, say, of keeping holy the Lord's day or tell myself that it doesn't matter if I lie or ask, why should I forgive? Or who says I need to care for the poor? Yet who am I to dismiss those things? If I'm not willing to be coached by Jesus Christ, the world suffers, and so do I. Maybe you'll watch some of the Olympics or this Tuesday's Billikens game or Thursday's Blues game or next Sunday's Super Bowl. If you do, note the importance of coaching. These are people who have put themselves under the authority of another, of a coach. They have learned the power and place of that old-fashioned word, obedience. If not for that, they'd have little chance for victory. It's true for me as well. No matter how much the culture or my own pride tells me that I should do it my way, call my own plays, run my own routes, I hope that in the end I say to Jesus what Peter said. Lord, I will do what you ask.